Hello students, let's continue the session on trigonometry. We were supposed to solve from question 9 onwards of exercise 7.4. If tan, uh, tan theta plus secant theta is represented by L, prove that secant theta is L square plus 1 upon 2 times L. We are given that tan theta plus secant theta equal to L. Suppose if I multiply and divide by secant theta minus tan theta, I will be making use of the identity. So that is a hint. Uh, you have to consider this as secant theta plus tan theta. This I will multiply with secant theta minus tan theta upon secant theta minus tan theta so that it becomes like a plus b into a minus b which will be secant square theta minus tan square theta divided by secant theta minus tan theta equal to l we all know that 1 plus tan square theta is 1 sorry secant square theta so secant square theta minus tan square theta will become equal to 1 so this implies 1 upon secant theta minus tan theta equal to L if you take the reciprocal you will be getting secant theta minus tan theta equal to 1 upon L okay Now you take the two equations obtained. One of the equation given is secant theta plus tan theta equal to L. One more equation is secant theta minus tan theta equal to 1 by L. These are the two equations obtained. Suppose these two equations are added together, tan theta get cancels. We get 2 times secant theta equal to uh, 1 plus 1 by L sorry it's not 1 it's l l plus 1 by l on simplification by taking lcm we get l square plus 1 upon l so secant theta will be equal to l square plus 1 upon 2 l so we got the result what is very important step here the important step is i have multiplied and divided by secant theta minus tan theta this is the most important step unless we do this we won't get the answer in a easier way let's see the next question question number 10 sin theta plus cos theta equal to p secant theta plus cosecant theta equal to q prove that q times p square minus 1 equal to 2 times p let me consider secant theta plus cosecant theta equal to q this implies 1 upon cos theta plus 1 upon sin theta equal to q on simplification I will be getting sin theta plus cos theta divided by cos theta into sin theta equal to q you must notice that sin theta plus cos theta is p so i'll replace this by p by sin theta i'll write first multiply to cos theta equal to q now sin theta into cos theta will become equal to p by q let me consider this as equation 1 now let me consider another equation sin theta plus cos theta equal to p i'll square on both the side 
on squaring i'll get sin square theta plus cos square theta plus 2 times sin theta cos theta equal to p square why did i do this i have done it basically because sin theta cos theta we have found so sin square theta plus cos square theta value is 1 plus 2 times i can replace sin theta cos theta with p by q equal to p square take the lcm we get q plus 2 times p equal to p square q i have cross multiplied too so q common i'll be getting p square minus 1 which is equal to 2 times p i have taken q to the other side i have taken common so we got the result q times p square minus 1 equal to 2p where is the trick used we have used this particular concept here this is the basic thing you need to square this on both the side so this step is an important step All right let's move on to the next question question number 11 if a sine theta plus p cos theta equal to c then prove that a c a cos theta minus b sine theta equal to root of a square plus b square minus c square what comes to your mind by looking at what is to be proved here we have a square b square as well as c square so uh, we need to square this given thing so i'll square on both the side of the given i'll be getting a sin theta plus b cos theta equal to c i'll square it so i'll make use of the identity it becomes a square sin square theta plus b square cos square theta plus 2 times a b sin theta cos theta equal to c square now i'll convert this sin theta in terms of cos theta and cos theta in terms of sin theta what do i get i'll be getting a square multiplied to 1 minus cos square theta plus b square multiplied to 1 minus sin square theta plus 2 times a b sin theta cos theta equal to c square why did i do so you will understand it a multiplied to 1 will be a square minus a square cos square theta plus b square minus b square sin square theta plus 2 times a b sin theta cos theta equal to c square why did i do so a square and b square i got it separated so i'll write that in right hand side i'll transpose it i'll be getting a square cos square theta minus is there i'll multiply with the minus what do i get a square cos square theta plus b square sin square theta minus 2 times a b sin theta cos theta here on transposing we would get a square as a negative b square as negative but when you multiply with minus 1 i'll get a square plus b square minus c square very important now you observe it is same like a cos theta minus b sin theta the whole square this will be equal to a square plus b square minus c square so a cos theta minus b sin theta will be equal to under root a square plus b square minus c square this was supposed to be proved what is a very important step we have followed here this is the most important step i have replaced sin square theta and cos square theta in terms of 1 minus 
cos square theta and 1 minus sin square theta and then simplify it unless we substitute in this particular step we won't get the result in that easier way right next question question number 12 1 plus secant theta minus tan theta upon 1 plus secant theta plus tan theta equal to 1 minus sin theta by cos theta let me make use of some identity to get the things done here oh, i'll consider the left hand side in the left hand side we have 1 plus secant theta minus tan theta upon 1 plus secant theta plus tan theta observe in the numerator this one i'll replace with secant square theta minus tan square theta secant square theta minus tan square theta plus secant theta minus tan theta upon the denominator i'll keep it as it is it is one minus secant theta sorry one plus secant theta plus tan theta now you observe this is nothing but a square minus b square so it can be written as secant theta plus tan theta multiplied to secant theta minus tan theta plus secant theta minus tan theta divided by 1 plus secant theta plus tan theta here secant theta minus tan theta has been common the remaining i'll write it will be secant theta plus tan theta plus one denominator also is one plus secant theta plus tan theta they go cancelled so we got secant theta minus tan theta it can be written as 1 by cos theta minus sin theta by cos theta. Take the LCM. We get 1 minus sin theta upon cos theta, which is nothing but the right hand side. Hence, we have proved since LHS and RHS are equal. Question number 13 the angle of elevation of top of the tower, 30 meter high from the foot of another tower in the same plane is 60 degree and the angle of elevation of top of the second tower from the foot of the first tower is 30 degree find the distance between the two towers also find the height of the tower, other tower so there are two towers here so one of the tower I'll consider here another tower here Sorry. These are the two towers. The angle of elevation of one of the tower is sixty degrees. From the foot of other tower, the angle of elevation is thirty degrees. So I'll consider this as thirty degree and this angle is sixty degree. The height of one of the tower is 30 meter. Another tower height we don't know, we will consider as x and the distance let me consider it as y. Alright, now observe what is tan of 30 degrees. This will be opposite side x upon the adjacent side y. So 1 by root 3 equal to x by y or y is equal to x root 3 let me call this as equation 1 now observe tan of 60 degree this will be opposite side is 30 upon y tan 60 is root 3 which is equal to 30 divided by i will replace y with x root 3 when root 3 root 3 is multiplied i'll get 3 3 times x is equal to 30 x value will become 10 therefore 
y value will become 10 root 3 if you consider a root 3 value as 1.732 it becomes 17.32 meters this is the distance between the two towers and the other tower is 10 meter high Question number 14 From the top of a tower which is h meter high the angle of depression of the two objects which are in line with the foot of the tower are alpha and beta such that beta value greater than alpha value find the distance between the two objects Similar question you must have come across in your textbook two ships Suppose if this is a tower, I am unable to make a straight line. Suppose if this is a tower, say TW, there are two objects. One of the object is making an angle beta. Another object is making an angle alpha. This is the angle of depression. This angle is beta and this angle is alpha. We all know that the angle of elevation and the angle of depression are equal. Let me consider this distance to be x units and this distance to be y units and the height of a tower be h. According to this figure, tan of beta will be equal to h by y or y will be equal to h upon tan beta let me call this as equation one now tan of alpha is h upon x plus y with this i will just multiply i will be getting x times tan alpha plus y times tan beta equal to h now i'll replace the value of y in terms of tan so h by tan beta into This is sorry this is tan alpha into tan alpha equal to h so x tan alpha equal to h common we get tan alpha by tan beta minus 1 So we get x value as h times tan alpha tan beta minus tan beta divided by tan alpha tan beta. I can further simplify this. How do I do that? I'll change the color of the ink. Observe. Here I'll take this separately. H times tan alpha divided by tan alpha tan beta minus tan beta divided by tan alpha tan beta. Tan beta will get cancelled, tan alpha will get cancelled, we'll be getting H times cot beta minus cot alpha so we got the relationship here sometimes they may ask to prove the distance between those two objects in terms of the equation this is the method to be followed the next question question 15 a ladder rests against a vertical wall at an angle of inclination alpha to the horizontal its foot 
is pulled away from the wall through a distance p so that the upper end slides a distance q downwards on the wall then the ladder makes an angle beta to the horizontal we need to show that p by q equal to cos beta minus cos alpha divided by sin beta sin alpha minus sin beta suppose if this is a wall and a ladder is resting towards the wall by making an angle alpha if this ladder is shifted the ladder will slide down by making an angle of elevation beta and it slides q meters downwards and this distance is say p we need to find the relationship in terms of p and q let me consider the height of the ladder to be some z and this particular distance i'll take it as x and this distance i'll take it as y look at the relation sin alpha opposite by hypotenuse it is x plus q divided by z and if you consider cos alpha we get y by z same way if you consider sin beta we get x by z and cos beta is y plus p upon z let me take rhs of to be shown rhs is cos beta minus cos alpha divided by sin alpha minus sin beta in these i am going to substitute the values in the place of cos beta we have y plus p upon z minus in the place of cos alpha we have y by z divided by in the place of sin alpha we have x plus q by z minus x by z we can separate this and write it as p by z minus y by z divided by x by z plus q by z minus x by z x by z y by z that it cancel will be getting p by q because q z z will also get cancel this is nothing but the left hand side hence we have proved lhs equal to rhs and the next question the angle of elevation of top of a vertical tower from a point on the ground is 60 degrees from another point 10 meter vertically above the first its angle of elevation is 45 degree find the height of the tower angle of elevation of the vertical tower's top is 60 degrees so let me consider this as the angle of elevation 60 degrees let this be the x be the height of the tower according to the question from another point 10 meter vertically above it means from this point say 10 meters vertically above it the angle of elevation is 45 degree this angle is new 45 degree suppose if i consider the height to be x the remaining distance will be x minus 10 right let me consider the distance to be y units same will be the distance here y units 
observe tan 45 degree we get x minus 10 upon y tan 45 is 1 x minus 10 by y so we get y is equal to x minus 10 let me call this as equation 1 now let us take tan of 60 degree which is x upon y tan 60 value is 1 by root 3 sorry it's not 1 by root 3 it is just root 3 tan 60 value is root 3 root 3 is equal to x upon in the place of y x minus 10 we get root 3 x minus 10 root 3 equal to x so we get 1 minus root 3 times x equal to 10 root 3 sorry minus 10 root 3 so we get the value of x as 10 root 3 upon root 3 minus 1 you can multiply root 3 plus 1 on both the side you will be getting uh, 10 times root 3 plus 1 into root 3 divided by 2 so we get the result as 2 root 3 multiplied to uh, sorry 5 root 3 multiplied to root 3 plus 1 you can check the answer on substituting we get it as 23.66 what you need to do is multiply root 3 to both these terms this becomes 3 added to in the place of root 3 you substitute 1.72 and then multiply will get 23.66 meters let's move on to the next question question 17 a window of a house is h meters above the ground from the window the angle of elevation and the depression of top and bottom of another house situated on the opposite side of the lane are found to be alpha and beta respectively prove that the height of the other house is h times 1 plus tan alpha cot beta meters let me consider window which is at h meters away the top and the bottom are viewed through the window from this point this is the house all right let me draw on horizontal here first this is the top which is viewed with an angle of alpha and the angle of depression of the bottom is beta let me consider the height of the house to be x so this will become h and this remaining distance is x minus h let me consider the distance between the house and the window to be some y units observe tan beta is h by y So that y value will be h upon tan beta let me call this as equation 1 let me take tan alpha tan alpha will be x minus h by y so y times tan alpha will become x minus h now in the place of y replace with h by tan beta so h by tan beta into tan alpha equal to x minus h now the value of x to be found so i'll better multiply this tan beta i'll get h times tan alpha equal to x tan beta minus h tan beta 
on transposing it can be taken common we get tan alpha minus tan beta equal to x times sorry this will become positive h times tan beta now take the value of x x will be equal to h times tan alpha plus tan beta divided by tan beta here h times tan alpha by tan beta plus tan beta by tan beta tan beta tan beta get cancel we get x as h times tan alpha into cot beta plus 1 i have written 1 by tan beta as cot beta so this is what is the height of the other house hence we have proved it let us solve the last question of the exercise question number 18 the lower window of a house is at 2 meter above the ground and its upper window is 4 meter vertically above the lower window at a certain instant the angle of elevation of a balloon from these windows are observed as 30 degree and 60 degree find the height of the balloon above the ground let me consider the two windows one of the window is at 2 meter above another window is at 4 meter above this 2 meter window 4 meter from the top of this window let me call this as window 1 window 2 from the window 2 the angle of elevation is 30 degrees from the window 1 the angle of elevation is 60 degrees now observe from year to year the distance has become now 6 meters if you consider the total distance of the balloon from the ground as x this will be x minus 6 and this distance is 4 meter and this distance is 2 meter what about this distance it is x minus Two. From here to here, it is two, so x minus two meters. Observe certain things here. What is tan of thirty degrees? Tan of thirty degrees is x minus six divided by the horizontal. I'll take it as y. So x minus six by y. Tan 30 value is 1 upon root 3. This is equal to x minus 6 upon y. Uh, we get the value of y as root 3 multiplied to x minus 6. Let me call this as equation 1. Now let's take tan of 60 degrees. This will be x minus 2 upon y. Tan 60 value is root 3. which is x minus 2 upon y we get a root 3 times y equal to x minus 2 let us substitute the value of y we get a root 3 multiplied to root 3 times x minus 6 equal to x minus 2 root 3 into root 3 is 3 3 multiplied to x is 3x Minus six root three, which is equal to x minus two. A root three, when multiplied, we have got six root three. Sorry, it is not six root three. It becomes six times three. So we get two x equal to eighteen minus two. 
so x value is 8 meters so the balloon is at 8 meter above the ground and this completes the chapter trigonometry and its application that's all for today's session thank you